Hi guys, Arthur here from Homeowner DIY. Today what I'm going to do is I'm going to replace the ignition switch in my 2000 Honda Civic behind me. Now guys, from 96 to 2000, the parts are all interchangeable. It's a sixth generation. The ignition switch for this generation is actually a factory recall. What that means is Honda has admitted that there's a problem with the part itself. So you can take it to the dealership and then quote unquote, they will fix it for free. Now I had a coworker a long time ago have the same car, same problem, and they found a reason to charge them for something. So guys, if you do take this to the dealership, be prepared to pay something because you know they always want a little bit on the side. Now the ignition switch is on the opposite side of the ignition key, so it's really easy to get to. But for the most part, uh, I think it's a relatively simple job, but we'll see what kind of uh, challenges we run into. So guys, what we'll do now is material and tools. All right guys, this is our material list. So this is the ignition switch. I guess it's a Napa Eshlin brand. It has a couple zap straps. It has a couple screws. I believe that is for the end here. And then we're going to use a little bit of electrical tape. Guys, this is what I believe I need to do this job. So let's do the tools list. Alright guys, this is our tools list. So we have our socket set. We have a screwdriver. I think I only need Phillips. Have a knife. Have tin snips. Needle nose pliers. And then our work light. Guys, this is what I believe I need to do this job. So let's get started. Alright guys, first thing we're going to do is disconnect our battery. So this is a 10 millimeter. And guys, uh, this is an older car, so you don't have a radio code, but if you do have a radio code, make sure you know what it is. What I always do as well is I will put a rag or something between the two, so in case they somehow do touch, at least there's a barrier. But guys, now that we have power off, we can start by removing the shroud around the steering column. All right, guys, so we need to remove the plastic shroud around the steering column. So we have one, two, three Phillips here, and then we have one, two, three Phillips on the bottom. You have to take all this stuff off so the plugs will be accessible. All right guys, this is the cover for the steering column. They have these small little bolts. And then this is the other part and then the Phillips bolts are a little bit longer. So guys, make note, in this case, you only have two different times, uh, two different types, but always make note of different screws where they come from. All right guys, this is our ignition switch here. So where this little channel is, the wires go uh, through the channel here It goes to here as we move along so it goes up into here and behind this bracket is The one plug and then the other one goes to this bracket Right there so what I'm going to do to make this easier is I'm going to take out that bolt there, that 10 mil, and then there's another 10 mil bolt right there. That is the other 10 mil bolt. So guys, to make this easier on myself, I'm going to take these two out right now. All right, guys, so directly in front, that is the other bolt that we are going to take out. All right, guys. So our two bolts are the are the exact same. All right, guys. This is our one connector, and then this is our other connector. So this one here, you got to push the tab down, pull out, and then this one is the same thing. It's just on the bottom. Alright guys, so we'll grab our needle nose pliers 
and then to press and take the plug out. So guys, that is our one plug. And now we'll do our other plug. All right guys, so that is our two plugs. All right guys, so this one has these two here and this one does not. So let's take a look at our plugs. Make sure that they look the same, which they do. And now we're gonna look at the other ones to make sure that they look the same. Which they do. Alright guys, so for this here, what we'll do is we'll pull these two wires out. And I suggest you mark one of them, uh, put a piece of tape or, or something over it. Again, feel free to take a picture if you think that is necessary. But what I'll do is uh, I'll, mark, I'll mark one of these off. I'm actually going to take a picture as well, just in case. Let's form good habits here. Alright guys, so I marked the one right here, and then the other one goes into the middle. So what I'll do now... Alright guys, so to get these wires out, you have to push the tab on, on both sides, and you got to get this, uh, this white plastic part out. Alright, so we depress the two, and now let's pull this out. And just like that, I broke it. Alright, what we'll do now is we'll just pull these, these out. Alright guys, I went all caveman on this, so I cut the plug apart because I couldn't get it out. But we're going to get rid of this anyway. So we're gonna grab our tin snips. We have a zap strap here, and then a zap strap here. So we'll cut them, guys. Be very careful that you don't hit any of the wires. All right, so that one went into this uh, hole here, and on the top. All right guys, so we'll, we'll take our ignition switch out. So we have a Phillips here and a Phillips here. And now we should be able to pull our ignition switch out. All right guys, so it's taped up here. I'm gonna very carefully cut the tape and then we'll see if we can slide out the ignition switch without any other issue. All right guys, so the last thing is to take this out. There is a replacement with the ignition switch and this has some type of end that actually goes up into here to hold it in place. But I'll cut this out now and then we'll pull out our switch. All right guys, last thing to do is we need to cut the electrical tape here. So this is our one connector. And then we gotta cut it to separate the other wires. All right guys, I just realized uh, there's one thing different from uh, this setup from my ignition switch. So this car has an aftermarket immobilizer. So this wire here that has the black with the yellow stripe, that comes down here and then it hooks into these two white ones here. So this actually goes into the uh, immobilizer module and then on the other side, that's what comes into here. So I believe if I was to cut this and then splice these together, I would bypass the immobilizer. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna cut this back here. I'll cut this here. We're gonna take the ignition switch out We'll slide the new one in, and then I'm gonna have to solder the pieces back together. All right guys, this is our tools list for soldering. So we have our soldering iron. We have lead-free electrical solder. Guys, this is not the same as plumbing solder, so be aware of that. 
I have wire strippers and then most importantly I have safety glasses guys this is what I need for soldering so let's get started all right guys so I will cut the wires put on safety glasses just in case I check the battery one more time to make sure that it is actually off So we'll cut that out and then we'll cut that out as well. And then this is our heat sink connector. Guys, I'm not going to use one of these because it's inside the car, so I'm just going to solder it back together and then put tape over it. But with that done, now what we can do is we can disconnect, or sorry, we can remove our ignition switch. So the first thing I'm going to do now is I'm going to strip the wire back. Guys, this is, looks like 10 gauge. Oh, I think it's actually 12. Yes, it's 12 gauge. Alright, the first thing we're going to do is put the plugs into this channel once again. Alright, that is good. Alright guys, we'll put our screws back in. So I've already put the one in there. All right, that is good. So what we're gonna do now is we are going to look at our black wire here that needs to be done. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna cut this all back. And guys, once again, be careful about not hitting the wire. Don't cut through the wire, the sheeting. All right, so with that done, we need the, we know the plug goes here and then it's going to go into here right there. So what we're gonna do is just figure out how much wire we probably need. So guys, that looks right there. Now also make sure that this is long enough to get to this, otherwise you're gonna have to splice in another wire and we don't wanna do more, more work than we have to. Alright guys, I'm going to get this all set up and then we'll get the iron ready. Alright guys, everything's ready to go. So I've got my soldering iron here. So guys, you have to put a little bit on the, the tip. This is called tinning. And then hold it on the bottom. Now these wires are thicker, so this is probably gonna take a little bit longer. But hold it on the bottom and once it gets warm enough, the heat from the wire will actually pull the solder through. All right, so I went ahead and I soldered both of them. I already taped this one up, but uh, that is what it is now. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to put a piece of electrical tape over this and then I'm going to put another piece going around. Once that is all done, what we'll do is we'll put these two plugs back into this connector. We'll plug everything in and then we'll reattach the battery and we'll see if this works. Alright guys, so I put the two wires back in. You push them in and then they will click into place and then you put the plastic bracket over and then that'll click into place once again. You have the uh, little tabs on the side. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to put the plugs back in and then we're going to reconnect the battery. Alright guys, so we'll put the other one in here. Push it in until it clicks. All right, guys, before we do anything else, we'll connect the battery. We'll start the car and make sure everything works. 
All right, guys, so we're back in the car. So the first thing we're gonna do is shut off our immobilizer. That is off. All right, so the car started. Everything seems to be okay. All right, guys, I will take the car for a test drive and then we'll come back. All right, guys, so we'll put the metal bracket back in. So it has two hooks that it hooks onto and then the screws just hold in place. All right guys, so what I'll do is I'll put the column, the plastic cover back on, and then we will do an overview of this job. All right guys, so that concludes this job. So the one part on this job I wasn't prepared for was having to solder the wires back for the immobilizer. Now guys, remember in the beginning of the video, I said that the dealership is gonna look for something to charge you for. In this case, to reconnect the immobilizer, I, I'm sure it would have been a hundred bucks because I think that's what I would charge for. But that was the one part that uh, I wasn't prepared for. And guys, the reason I didn't film the actual soldering was because it took me a while to uh, get the solder uh, to melt. I think my soldering iron for 12 gauge wire is a little bit small, but hey, we learned something and we'll apply it on to the next job. Guys, the time on this job, the time was about three hours. Like I said, the soldering was the the part that I wasn't prepared for, but uh, everything worked out well. I've taken the car for a nice long drive. There are no, no issues, no problems or anything like that. So I have to say I'm very happy with it. Guys, the cost of this job, the ignition switch was $80. Other than that, I mean, I, I didn't need anything else. Like I said, this was a relatively straightforward job. Uh, I didn't run into any problems or anything like that. It was a little awkward trying to uh, t to film it and not bang into the camera, but uh, hey, welcome to Cars. Guys, I hope you enjoyed the video. I hope you learned something. I hope something here is going to help you on your project when you need to go ahead and do that. Guys, until next time, please hit the like button, subscribe, and I'll see you on the next project.